the greatest thing about the zebra that I like um, is that it just it makes a tremendous statement. Um, uh, when you're talking about environmental leadership, uh, leading by example is is what I found to be probably the best form of leadership. And when I had the opportunity to get a zebra, I I said I want one with the stripes because to me nothing makes more of a statement than driving an electric car. And how can you miss this driving around down the road? I think. When I'm driving down the road in my zebra with the stripes, I get more attention than a Hummer or a Ferrari, um, uh, which is kind of cool, cool when you're talking about a $10,000 electric car. Get that a lot, or people giving you a thumbs up? Sometimes, I mean, driving a vehicle like this, I'm not sure if there are people are laughing with me or laughing at me or or anything. But uh, what I've noticed most is that um, is kids just love them. Um, you know, whenever. Um, I see a family uh, um, with kids, they always have a positive reaction. They're always smiling and going, ooh, look. And uh, I, would, I would love to put cars like this out in front of the zoo. So you, just, um, but it's just a great idea for a, a vehicle to name it Zebra. And, um, we're talking about an environmentally friendly car, and then we're talking about a, a wild animal. And this, um, Hopefully we can come up with more cool names that that uh, can highlight, you know, animals that are endangered, like zebras. The zebra is designed to go up to 40 miles per hour. Um, we design it. We call it a city car. It's designed to uh, for city limit driving. Um, a lot of people own cars. A lot of families own more than one car. Corporate fleets or government fleets. Cars that don't go that far every day and um, our thinking is that um, a lot of these millions of these cars could be electric um, today and so that's part of our marketing for the Zebra um, the, and the great thing is you can plug them in, in any normal household outlet and if, you, and if you can plug into uh, if you can plug in just for just an hour or two you can get most of your charge back There's a fleet approach shot through the window here. Okay. That's what we've got going on. Let me get my... Here we're coming up to the Zap uh, car facility where we're... Right now we're doing some... Some uh, integration of the batteries and the controllers before we QC the cars and send them out to dealers. This is... Um, this is the facility. Uh, it was a new one. We just moved into a, a warehouse where we doing um, a lot of the final um, integration of the batteries and the controllers into the cars and then they get QC'd and then they get shipped out to dealers. Um, you can see the Zebra comes in real bright colors so that they stand out in a world of SUVs. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the new options that we're adding to the Zebras is a rooftop solar panel. Um, this solar panel um, on the vehicle itself it won't drive the vehicle, but what it does is it provides a small trickle charge of electricity. While the car is parked, it can re recharge the battery to a certain extent. Uh, well, to such an extent that if it's parked in the sun all day, you can probably get a couple miles of free driving just on sunlight. Um, but the probably the best way to use solar with your electric car is to have solar systems on your house that can recharge it um, because most of the battery uh, capacity for these vehicles will be supplemented by the grid. So, um, but the, uh, the solar panels actually adds a little bit to the range. Also, it helps keep the batteries um, energized and fresh so that they last longer. But this is where we um, do the final QC on the Zebras. Uh, we, we, sh we are made in China. They're brought over here. We, put the batteries in and we incorporate the control system that, uh, and then, we, then it goes through the final QC process before they get shipped out to our Zap dealers. Oh, Eric here is, uh, gets around uh, going back and forth between the different warehouses on one of our other products which is the Zappy 3 scooter. You can see in the front wheel there is a motor unlike uh, normal vehicles now what we're doing with electrics is we're building the motors into the wheels as a way to save on space, make it more energy efficient, um, make it easier to work on for maintenance and things.
I like to call it uh, the poor man segue. Um, you know, the segue is great technology, um, but you need that self with two wheels. You need that self-balancing gyroscopic control system with the foot sensors and everything. With our vehicle, three wheels helps with the balance. So the rest of the balancing is up to you. And to make it go, you have to use your thumb. But doing those things, we can sell this for about $500. And I think the Segway uh, sells into the thousands. Some law enforcement agencies and warehouses are starting to use them, just like Eric here in the warehouse. Um, it's a great way to get back and forth um, without using a traditional car. Uh, it's fast, and efficient, and doesn't. It's quiet. It can be used indoors because it's zero emissions. Um, and a scooter like that needs almost no maintenance. Just plug it in whenever you're not using it. Electric scooters have been a real um, boom um, over the last 10 years. I think it's been one of the most exciting things to happen in electric vehicles because now you have an electric vehicle that's super low cost, um, can be used for transportation all over town and it's almost non-polluting and it costs just a few cents in electricity to power. Um, 10 years ago we were selling similar kinds of vehicles um, and we were looking at ch the Chinese market and there were no electric bicycles or scooters on the market in China. But today they estimate that there's in excess of 300 million people riding electric bikes and scooters every day. Hey Eric Vogel, how are we doing today? Wonderful. Oh. We're doing just wonderful today. <laughs> Um, I understand that we received a lot of zebras today. Yes, we in fact received three containers of zebra, totaling out to 24 zebras. Um, all of them are PK trucks, and we have the new PK four-wheeler in for the larger people with a larger bed and load capacity. This is the four-wheel truck. This is a PK XL. And with the PKXL, you have a larger bed space so you can fit more in. It also will hold more weight. And the beautiful feature is right up here. With a new square nose front end, we can actually fit larger people into this truck. And it comfortably seats two. Where our standard truck for the larger adults, um, like myself, we have a little difficulty fitting two people up front. Now with this new adaptation, we can easily get two large Americans into this vehicle for easy driving. These are a white vehicle. We will also have them available in the uh, PK Blue, which is the bed that you see here. And in future generations, you'll be able to get everything from the green to the lipstick red in a large truck. Thank you, Eric. Uh, tell me about the vehicle you're riding around right now. How do you, how do you use that every day? Oh, well, I uh, ride around on a Zappy 3 Pro every day. I utilize that for shipping and receiving purposes as well as warehouse pulling. If I have an order, I utilize the basket to place the items in, get it up to shipping, and ship it on out. And personally, I do happen to drive one of the Zebra sedans as my daily commute vehicle, and I love them. So do I, so congratulations. Thank you very much. And I'll talk to you later, Alex. Um, right now, I think that we've built about 500 vehicles, and we're in the works of probably doing five to 10,000 uh, this year. All these vehicles are sold.